Today, we're going to take a look at converting improper fractions to decimal form. We'll look at five different examples, and here are the directions. Convert the following improper fractions into decimal form. Number one, eight-fifths. Number two, nine-fourths. Number three, five-halves. Number four, five-fourths. And last of all, number five, nineteen-sixths. If you'd like to take a moment and copy these down, you can pause the video and do that. If you're trying to try these at home or wherever you may happen to be, go ahead and do that now. Well, let's get started. The first one, we have 8 fifths as a fraction. And we've talked about many times in our previous posts that every fraction is actually also a division problem. And you read that from top to bottom. So we're going to use that to convert this fraction into decimal form. You'll actually have a whole number part and a decimal part when you're finished. Now if you read that from top to bottom, that would really be 8 divided by 5. And what you'll find is that you need to tack on some zeros after the decimal point. The reason will kind of be more clear as we go through this problem. Let's begin. 5 goes into 8 how many times? Well, 5 times 1 would equal, it would equal 5. Uh, 5 times 2 would equal 10, so that would be too much. So we'll stick with 5 times 1 equals 5. Then we'll subtract, giving us a difference of 3. Now we'll bring down the next that the zero in the place over because we really can't have a remainder of three when we're dealing with decimals. So therefore we have to tack on these extra zeros after the decimal point as placeholders for the tenths and the hundredths places. So there we go. Bring down that zero and we have 30. Now we think to ourselves, five goes into 30 how many times? Well, you might be thinking six. You'd be exactly correct because 6 times 5 equals 30. We subtract and we come up with a difference of 0. Now you could bring down that extra 0 and think to yourself 5 goes into 0 how many times? Well that would be 0 because 0 times any number equals 0. It's a 0 property working there. So 0 times 5 would be 0. We subtract and you come up with zero. Now that last zero is really optional. You don't necessarily need it. You could state your answer as one and six tenths, or if you were to tack on that zero, the one and sixty hundredths. Essentially, it, it is the same. It has the same value. It is equal. There we go. So your final answer would be one and six tenths or one and sixty hundredths. Let's move on. Example two is nine fourths, and we do the same thing. We handle this this fraction as a division problem. We'll read it from top to bottom. Would it be nine in the dividend divided by four as our divisor. Now we can say to ourselves, okay, four goes into nine. Let's see, four times two is eight. Four times three is twelve. That'd be too much. So we'll stick to four times two. 4 times 2 equals 8. Subtract, we get 1. Well, like I said before, we can't have a remainder when you're dealing with decimals. We're really trying to get our answer in, into a whole number of decimal form. So now we have to tack on a couple of zeros to represent the tenths and the hundredths places. So here we go. We have something to bring down. Look at that. So we'll bring down that zero and continue our uh, division process. If you need some brushing up on division, you can check out our posts on division. But anyhow, here we go. Four goes into 10. How many times? Well, four times two is eight, and four times three is 12. So we have to go with two. That's how many times can four go into 10 without going over. So therefore, it's two. So two times four is eight. Subtract, we get two. And we bring down the zero, making 
20 down there. So 4. Ah, 4 goes into 20. I bet you're thinking this too. 5 times. Yes, very good if you're thinking that. So 5 times 4 equals 20. Subtract and we get 0. And there you have your answer to this one. Up there in the quotient, uh, we have 2 and 25 hundredths as our final answer. There we go. Number three, five halves. So we'll move this through this one a little bit more quickly, reading this top to bottom. We divide the numerator by the denominator, so that would be five divided by two. Uh, two goes into five how many times? Let's see, two times two is four, so that would be two. Two times two is four. Subtract, we get five minus four is one. Uh, now we're left with the same thing. We can't have a remainder, so we have to go into decimals, and all our decimals represent values less than one. So we will, oops. We'll take it to the tenths and the hundredths, and hopefully that'll be all we'll need for this. So let's check it out. We've got two goes into one down here. And we can't do that, so we need to bring down the zero. All right, two goes into 10. You're probably thinking five times. You'd be absolutely correct, good for you. Five times two is 10. Subtract, and a difference of zero. And like the previous uh, problem a couple problems ago, your end, you, you end up with zero, you could bring that zero down, and two goes into zero, zero times, zero property there, zero times two is zero, we subtract get zero and there you go so it's pretty straightforward um, if you read this division problem I mean or this fraction as a division problem you take five divided by two and that really makes sense I mean if you had five dollars and you divided amongst two people each person would get two dollars and 50 cents. So sometimes it is good to carry it over into the hundredth place, especially if you're talking about money. So there we go. And your answer is two and fifty hundredths or two and five tenths would also be in, if you're talking about money, two dollars fifty cents. Let's try the next one. Five fourths. So it's like saying if you have five dollars to divide amongst four people, so we'll set it up as a division problem. Numerator divided by a denominator. I'm just going to tack on these zeros right now, looking ahead to see that we'll probably need those. And here we go. Four goes into five, one time, one times four is four, subtract, you get one. You have a zero to bring down now that we tacked on those zeros behind the decimal point, representing the tenths place. But anyhow, we have a, t a zero next to the one making ten. Four goes into ten how many times? Two times. So two times four is eight. You subtract, and you'll get two. I mean, you would have to borrow in that case. But there you go. Ten take away eight equals two. And now we bring down this zero. And look at that. We're working with 20 once again. And in this case, we've got uh, 4 goes into 20. Once again, 5 times. So 5 times 4 equals 20. Subtract, get 0. And there you have it. So your final answer would be 1 and 25 hundredths, or dollar twenty-five. you're talking about some money. And uh, there you can see. All right, next up we have 19.6. And this is probably the most tricky problem of um, of the five. So let's take a close look at this one. Again, we'll treat this fraction as a division problem and we're dividing the numerator by the denominator. We read those top down. 
you'd have 19 divided by 6. I'm going to go ahead and tack on a couple of zeros there. But something interesting kind of happens here. Well, we've got 6, and it goes into, well, it can't go into 1, but it will go into 19. So let's look at that 19 right there, 19. So 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18. Well, that's pretty close. 6 times 4 is 24. That's too much. So let's stick with the 3. And 3 times 6 would be 18. We'll subtract. 9 minus 8 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So here we're left with 1. And we bring down this 0. 6 goes into 10. Nope, forgot to bring that decimal point up. There we go. We have to remember to do that. So 6 goes into 10. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. That's too much. So once. 1 times 6 equals 6. Subtract, we get 4. And we'll bring down that 0, giving us 40. 6 goes into 40. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7 is 42. So 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. Subtract. Ah, we get 4. Hmm. Look what we have to do. We have to tack on. Oh, we have to tack on some more zeros here. All right, so now we have something to bring down. But I bet you see what's going to happen. I bet you can look at that and figure out what's happening here. We have 40 once again. We just tried to divide 6 into 40. And we found out that 6 times 6 equals 36. You subtract, and once again, you get 4. Now, if you kept doing this forever and ever, you would... You'd go on forever, infinitely. Now you're dealing with the infinite, because this 6 would repeat on and on and on and on forever. So, how we handle that in math is we take a look at that first 6 up here in the quotient. So um, let me just direct your view over here. And if you look at that first 6, and it appears in the hundredths place, that one we call... A repeating number. It's part of the decimal portion of that answer. So let's rewrite it over here. 19 6 equals 3 and this decimal portion. So we read it like this. 3.1 Point one six repeating. It's not the one six repeating. It's just the six. You can see that line written above the six tells you that that digit repeats over and over infinitely. So you are left with this answer. Three point one six repeating. And that has been dividing improper fractions. Um, really treating them as division problems. I mean, if you really remember that each fraction is a division problem, it really, it's going to help you out through this process. So thanks for checking out Mr. Meredith's EduBlog, and we will see you again next time. <laughs>